Welcome to our speaker interview series at MDX 2019 here in Austin, Texas. Joining us now is Kevin Hope. Kevin is a senior member of the multi-channel predictive analytics team at Merit Direct. This team of experts provides predictive modeling and strategic services to a wide range of business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer clients across the globe. Although mostly known for having a great sense of fashion among his team members, he wears many hats ranging anywhere from advanced predictive analytics, circulation planning, to digital marketing. Kevin holds a BA in marketing as well as an MBA degree in finance from Iona College. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right. So what do you consider to be some of the differences between accuracy and precision for marketing? I think as uh, marketers kind of in general, uh, we tend to pride ourselves on being extremely data driven, mm -hmm. almost to a fault. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when it comes to thinking about precision, if we were to run a test, for example, to try to solve for attribution in marketing channel A, mm -hmm. we run that test and the numbers come back and, you know, the first answer is, 26.3, meaning mm -hmm. we think that this channel is responsible for 26.3% of revenue. Mm -hmm. And the second test comes back and it's 23.1. And the third is 20. Mm -hmm. And I think as marketers, because we like to kind of believe in absolutes sometimes, that number changes and it tends to make us kind of dismiss the findings. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, when, you know, when we think about precision, those, are, those three numbers would be very precise, but they're changing. Right. And so when we think about accuracy, the thing that we don't often take away from that is, well, the answer to what we were trying to solve for was somewhere between the ranges of 20 and 30. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we search for accuracy, sometimes we get the answers that we need enough to kind of move on to the next thing that we want to do as mm -hmm. marketers mm -hmm. instead of getting caught up in precision. Absolutely. So how can marketers ensure revenue from marketing channels um, increases with minimum expense outlay? I think it, I think it comes down to how you uh, kind of structure your tests. Mm -hmm. And so we have a saying on our analytics team, which is, uh, you want to test kind of an inch wide and a mile deep. And what essentially that means is if you're trying to test, uh, for example, the incrementality of paid search mm -hmm. on your business, uh, you can limit your exposure and still get answers by doing something kind of drastic, right? So mile deep, shutting off paid search mm -hmm. in a state for okay. an X amount of time period. Right. And so you're limiting your exposure. Now you don't pick New York or California, right? Mm -hmm. You don't pick the big, big states, states to your business, yeah. but you end up um, kind of limiting exposure and getting the test results you need mm -hmm. to determine incrementality um, of that specific marketing channel. Interesting. So what are some of the biggest hurdles you have seen the industry face in regards to marketing attribution? Oh, uh, I think we tend to overcomplicate it. Uh, the reason that everybody kind of looks at attribution uh, as this holy grail is because it's a, it's a really tough thing to try to accomplish, mm -hmm. to figure out what is actually driving revenue mm -hmm. uh, for your business from a marketing standpoint, super complex. The amount of data that's available to us as marketers is mm -hmm. kind of infinite uh, up until this point in time. And what actually drives somebody to, to purchase, whether it's a consumer or a business, it's complicated. There's macroeconomic factors. There's a lot that goes into it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, I think, when when you think about what the industry does, I think we try to uh, we overemphasize on the smaller data points and we kind of miss the bigger picture. And so when you think about the goal of attribution, mm -hmm. it's to understand how to allocate your marketing budget correctly across different channels. Mm -hmm. And when you set up tests kind of one at a time, you could still achieve that without overcomplicating all the results and saying, we need to incorporate every single data point into attribution. You don't really need to. So has the way in which Merit directs um progress towards marketing attribution. Has that changed from when it started over the years to now? Absolutely. Pretty much the same. No, definitely. So I think as an analytics team, we're kind of constantly evolving. We mm -hmm. have to. More data becomes available to us, but also we refine our approach as we continue to learn things uh, about what that data is telling us. And so a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, we put a strong emphasis on our team through algorithm algorithmic attribution, Okay. meaning specifically um, we would look at a conversion and we would look at all of the marketing touch points that came before that conversion. We mm -hmm. would say, um, this click on Google was worth 20% of the revenue. Okay. And this catalog that we mailed was worth another 30% of the revenue. Um, that approach, mm -hmm. although it's still very valid, right? Merit builds very good models in-house. Okay. It was really hard um, with our client base to have them kind of optimize their marketing budget around that. Mm -hmm. And so if I gave you that information, you you might think, well, maybe, you know, maybe 20% of the revenue needs, 20% of my marketing budget needs to get devoted to mm -hmm. the catalog. 
well, maybe that doesn't, you know, necessarily make sense from an attribution standpoint. Mm -hmm. So there are a ton of tools in a marketer's arsenal. How do they um, make sure they're looking for the right parameters to make sure they generate the right results? Hmm. Um, I would say, you know, this is this is one of those things kind of goes back to another answer, which is mm -hmm. you don't you don't want to overcomplicate it. So, of course, you have a lot of tools that you can use. And, you know, somebody has reporting for the email channel. Somebody has reporting that exists within your company mm -hmm. for the direct mail channel, for digital, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Each one of those reports has their own opinion about what's driving revenue. And so I think if you want to focus on a tool, it's kind of more about the approach mm -hmm. of how you measure something complicated like attribution is kind of look outside of all of your existing tools. Put it up on a whiteboard and say, when I change my marketing, right? So keep the variables, right? You change one variable at, at one point in time, mm -hmm. and then you measure that impact on revenue. Okay. And so to go back to the example that I used before on search, when I turn off paid search, what happens to revenue from the business, not just revenue inside of the online channel, mm -hmm. right? Because all of these marketing channels do drive sales. Um, they just, it's not as independent. And everybody kind of knows that uh, instinctually, but it's its really about the discipline mm -hmm. testing to kind of get the answers. Very interesting. Cool stuff. Thank you so much, Kevin. Appreciate your time. Thank you.